गैलान टूडे वी हैव बासवती बी अस एंड काफी लोग बासवती को ये भी बोलते हैं कि शी इज अ सुपर गर्ल बिकॉज ऑफ हर अचीवमेंट्स इन द फील्ड शी हैज डन एंड आज हम उनके सारे अचीवमेंट्स के बारे में तो बात नहीं कर सकते बिकॉज इट विल बी अज पॉडकास्ट देन बिकॉज शी हैज डन अ लॉट बी एट यू नो हार्डवर्ड में स्कॉलरशिप या फिर गूगल स्कॉलरशिप या फिर लिंक इन सारी इंटर्नशिप अ लॉट एंड लॉट सो आज हम उनका फोकस करने वाले हैं बस इसी टॉपिक पे हाउ शी गॉट हर इंटर्नशिप विद बार्कलीज यू के and that too it was off campus opportunity and and most importantly she will be going to london to do her internship and let's hear from her you know firstly vasvati if you can just you know introduce yourself yourself a bit uh, for the audience and then i will be asking you the questions and then we can have it done sure so hello everyone i am vasvati roy and i will be interning with barclays london as a developer analyst intern from the month of june and i also got selected in google season of docs with the async api organization and i have been a person who loves open source as well as loves to participate in tech internships and today i'm here to share my journey with everyone okay so thanks a lot and even talking about that basvati is from a tier 3 college so aisa nahi hai ki wo iit aur nit wala tag use karke she got the internship pura puri off campus tha so the thing is ki agar if you are skilled enough you can get in so how was with the you you know applied for it did you take a referral or uh, like as apne pehle mention kiya it was off campus opportunity uh, so you know how did it went like uh, where did you apply did you take a referral and what was it so the application process starts from june or july and i didn't just apply to barclays i applied to different other companies and i made sure to apply to only those companies which are sponsoring visas because unless a company sponsors your visa you cannot enter a separate country so i tried to focus on those i applied to jp morgan i applied to bnp paribas i applied to palantir london and applied to barclays london and apart from these i also applied to some other companies just to like sit in the online assessment not just to get into the interviews because they will not call again for the interviews if they don't sponsor your visas so i gave interviews with palantir london also with bnp paribas london and i gave the online assessment of jp morgan and for barclays the, the entire process was i mean i went to that okay process. so like which was the website you know or which was the application you uh, applied from so for applying for international opportunities i found indeed uk.com as the best one and i believe that if you go there and search for a particular role it will sort everything for you in order there will also be opportunities which are posted a long time ago and they might not be active so you need to check whether the opportunities are are recent or not like maybe posted within 30 days also like uh, you should always focus on spending a particular time of your schedule to just apply to opportunities because if we don't apply we will not get to know whether we are get going for the further rounds or not so for every week from starting from june to i mean till january i applied i used to spend at least 3 to 4 hours per week only to sort out which companies i should apply to and i i mean each application process takes around 6 to 7 minutes because uh, they are lengthy and like you have to fill everything and so like i just try to apply for as many opportunities i could so that i could i mean i could be familiar with the hiring processes and i mainly try to focus on applying the to the companies which are sponsoring the okay, and how did you make sure that that particular company is sponsoring do you have a list for that or you know or how was it actually i tried searching on linkedin previously to, to i mean the people who already you know, went from india to do an internship there on site so if they are going on site it means definitely the company is sponsoring the visa so the company name which i already mentioned are some of the companies which sponsor visas only for internships because there are many companies which will sponsor visa for full time roles or even experienced students but most of the companies do not sponsor visas for internships mostly the banks like barclays jp morgan bnp paribas all of these sponsor visa for internships even palantir also sponsors visa for it okay that that's really good you know and folks like uh, i will be mentioning a link you know where you can find uh, the companies wherein uh, for it is they are offering visas so maybe you can check that out i will mention in the description 
so basically moving forward and how was your coding round for barclays because you know like during my time you know i also worked with barclays during my summer and it was in pune office so folks everybody also releasing a video on how the total process was so stay tuned and make sure to subscribe the channel but at the same time vasuthi how was your coding test like and you know if you just can tell like like a number of assessment you uh, gave and what was the coding question level you know like if you guys compare with lead code medium or hard or uh, if you are a competitive programmer we can we can even compare with code forces dev abc or you know similarly so go for it yeah so when you apply to international companies they generally focus less on coding rounds and more on aptitude ones so like barclays has an online assessment which does not contain any coding questions they have coding questions in the interview rounds but for the online assessment they have zero coding questions the assessment is divided into two parts the aptitude and the behavioral one now the catch is that the aptitude questions are not like similar to the ones we practice like we practice for i mean work and time questions in aptitude or some similar speed time distance questions we generally practice these for the companies but barclays has a separate set of questions which are kind of diagrammatic and kind of like pictorial so like there i mean i can give an example that there is a schedule and we i mean there are slots for each of the timings and we have to uh, use our mental ability so that we can put every employee in the perfect schedule so this is a, a situation based question and these are the questions which we cannot practice from beforehand we have to do it on spot because there are no as such practice materials at least i couldn't find them but if you apply to barclays they will send you a practice test link in which similar questions to the i mean similar questions are present and that will give you a broad idea about the test and for the behavioral part i would highly recommend to go through the values of barclays because when you are trying to answer any behavioral question be it in online assessment be it in interviews you should always try to keep in mind the company values because that's when you can i mean the company assessment will go good because the people who are reviewing your assessment will get to know that yes you have Uh, read their values and your mindset is matching with their values then only they will shortlist you okay and even i remember as with you know i guess we had a chat on linkedin and you even asked me you know what should i do for this behavioral thing and i this wrote go for rises yes. so it is really good and even i can also correlate with the timing thing so it was basically like as a you need to schedule meetings for everyone and everyone should be present sort of this so nice okay uh, now taking forward since it was totally off campus and even uh, you are from iem that is a tier 3 college you can consider that uh, so how did you make your resume that good that you know your resume were even selected and you got the ot link because most of the people even talking about myself we don't get the ot links whenever we are applying like till that i did not get a single ot link that i am applying off campus so even uh, i didn't apply a lot i will start applying now uh, but what uh, you had in your resume that made you different from the crowd so if you can just share the tips and even how did you validate your ats score uh, and what people should keep in mind while they are pre- uh, preparing their resumes yeah so another thing i would like to share is that barclays or any other banks in which you apply for international roles they will directly send you the online assessment link because that is automated if you are filling their eligibility criteria perfectly then they will send you the link but after your online assessment is over they do not consider only the online assessment score because thousands of people are applying and many people can have the same score right so the the thing that makes you different here or the thing that makes you stand out for going to the interview rounds is your resume and i would like to share that in my resume i focused on improving all the sections because often we try to improve just one section or just keep focusing on any specific section but we should not do that when we are trying to apply for out i mean opportunities outside india the things are quite different they want someone who is equally good in making projects equally i mean equally put efforts in their work experiences also worked hard to get good achievements at the same time had good community works so all of these parts are equally important when you try to apply for any uh, i mean any opportunities outside and the thing is they are also very community centric 
because when i gave the interviews they were there were like a lot of questions which were related to community work my leadership skills and if i had not done actually then i wouldn't have been able to answer those questions in the interviews and so that's how i framed my resume and regarding the improvement of the score i used a website called resumeworded.com i feel that it is a great website i mean you don't need to take the premium but the free version is enough to get you a good resume score they will uh, show all the important points and you can just improve accordingly okay that's good and even i will try to get bus with his uh, resume i will just ask her and if she is giving i will be mentioning that in the link as well so keep your eyes on the links okay so now you know we need dsa ultimately right and even you mentioned the importance of project building while you are applying for international opportunities so how did you maintain the balance you know like how did you start with dsa or did you start with dev and then you shifted to dsa when you had your interviews so how was it so like uh, talking about my second year i used to try to i mean i try to just do at least one question every day from either lead code or code forces practice problems because consistency is more important than doing 10 questions per day and also like doing one question will take uh, at least 2 to 3 hours i i mean the in the initial stages and then we can improve by increasing the count of our questions and going to better problems to improve our problem solving but consistency is the main thing and coming to development i was mostly interested in machine learning and analytics and i built projects around the same and i also contributed to a few open source projects which helped me improve my resume as well as my skills and i also built some projects and uh, so i used some ui to display my projects because often like it happens that we build a project in machine learning and keep it in a jupyter notebook and if we i mean if we try to deploy it even with the taking help of a web developer to deploy our project it will be a better impression on the person who is checking your resume a lot of folks might be interested because as i mentioned people need not be very good with the coding assessment round it is mostly best with aptitude and behavioral questions and now they have even heard about the money that you will be draw, they will be drawing from that so you know how if you just you know demystify the interview rounds like you know how many rounds you had and uh, what were asked the duration of the rounds uh, what sort of questions you faced like did it also had cs fundamental questions or uh, it was mostly on your resume or did you they even uh, told you to you know share your screen and or uh, show us the code and what was it exactly yes so basically i had two rounds of interview and each interview round is divided into three parts starting with the introduction of uh, the interviewer as well as the candidate and then going to the technical competency round which uh, involves asking different technical questions and then finally comes the behavioral round where behavioral questions are asked upon your leadership and community work so in the technical round in my first technical round i was asked a dsa question which was around code forces 1000 rating level of division 2 and rest was totally focused on cs fundamentals like in very much depth also there were some basic questions on software testing because we do that subject in college called software engineering so having basic concepts of software testing and validation and why they are important then talking about how to build a clean code and how to improve the code modularity and why is it important so there was a long discussion on both of these and there were also some questions on dbms then oops and also os in the first interview and uh, in the second interview i was also asked about uh, software scaling because i had system design mentioned in my resume so i guess because of that thing i had to answer some questions related to the same and there were also some questions about how we can use the cloud services and there was a long discussion on that so it was mostly a discussion on topics that how in depth knowledge we have on the particular topic so that it's not like that we just know the topic in a i mean in a upper say, in not a proper depth yeah in upper level so like it it shouldn't be the case you should know each topic so much good that you are able to discuss on it with the interviewer and there were also some questions on linux and basic operating systems and again 
there was behavioral questions and the behavioral questions were really time consuming and good ones because like i can remember some questions like tell me about a time when you worked under extreme pressure in college and how did you deal with that and then there was also questions like a difficult situation in work and when people are not agreeing with you then how would you react to that situation so like uh, i mentioned most of the situations answers as my own experiences because i built college projects where i worked in teams i participated in hackathons where i worked with people from different colleges so each of the hackathon groups or the college project groups gave me different experiences and i built my answers according to that situation because each of the answers i mean each of the questions are quite long enough and need explanation so like if we haven't been in that situation then talking about 2 to 3 minutes on the same is quite difficult so i decided to frame all my answers according to my past experiences and it worked okay. for me that's good and you know as with what i have seen over the years is uh interviews are tough it might be that you know things but we miss on things because we get nervous right and uh, so uh, acing the interviews and what all tips you know like did you follow some of uh, blogs or you know did you read something and now since you have aced rounds as you mentioned and as we can see from your linkedin and everything how did you do like you know if you just want to share three tips for young kids who are just trying to get an internship or get a job might be so what all tips they should keep in their minds and to is around so the first thing i would recommend is get yourself someone who can take a mock interview of yours i didn't get that opportunity and i completely regret for that because i had to go through a lot of companies interviews to improve my skills but at the same time if i had taken mock interviews then the process wouldn't have been so difficult for me so mock interviews is something very important another thing is be clear with your concepts and try to revise everything before your interviews because when my interviews came i just went through the cs fundamental sheet of striver and there were a lot of questions which helped me overcome the fear of uh, facing a cs fundamental interviews because i had my senior who worked in barclays uh, I mean, in Manchester, in UK. So he told me that there is major focus on CS fundamentals. So this is another thing. Do some research about the interview you are going to sit in. Don't just go blankly because for Barclays, if I had practiced a lot of DAC, a lot of coding questions, and didn't give focus on CS fundamentals, then I wouldn't have cleared the rounds. So every interview has a specific focus point. Make sure that you are uh, learning about the same, doing some research and. at least familiar with the topics which they are commonly asked okay absolutely like you know like if we should read about at least archives so gfg has a lot of archives so if you don't have good seniors in your college who have already been there and done that you can read the gfg archives and even i have started recently a playlist you know life above fang so if you are interested you can just you know subscribe to my channel as well and you can just see whenever i'm posting like a podcast like this one like wherein baswati is getting international offer in barclays which is not a bank but it has a really good pay and really amazing work culture because i have been there and i'm pretty sure basu will be facing and experiencing the same now you know the world is uh, filled with the resources right uh, there is a lot of people who are teaching a lot of things a lot of sheets are there for solving questions and even like for projects what they should build or they should not build how they should prepare for cs fundamentals so if i ask you you know three best resources that has helped you a lot so what will be your take on that yeah so like for coding i mainly prefer take you forward channels videos because they are very amazing and i also refer to aditya verma's videos which were like a booster for me for clearing my concepts and for cs fundamentals i went through every video of gate smasher i prepared my own notes which i study every time before i face an interview and also the strivers dsa sheet as well as the cs fundamental sheet helped help me a lot during every interview because before every interview i used to try that i would go through and revise every question in the sheet and it really helped me in all the absolutely and i guess you know i also have a very similar approach like i also follow striver where i was doing you know for it trees and graphs and aditya verma majorly for dynamic programming and the concepts which he 
no the yes. actually the problem solving ability boosts up like the way he connects every point and ultimately you know tells that okay so you can solve any stack question with this or any db problem with this sort of approaches so thanks you know it's good to know that we are on the same track okay uh, so ultimately thanks a lot bas with for your time you know i try to ask uh, every question that come into my mind and you know i just try to jot them down and this is what i had for you so in case you know that there is a chance that i have missed on something uh, that you know you wanted to share about or there is some final tips that you want to share with people who are applying on you know specifically for international offers like anything if you want to share specifically so it's your time now you can share that yes like i would like to share the time gap between the online assessment and the interview of barkis so like i applied on june last year and i immediately got the online assessment and my interviews were on february just imagine the time gap so like i forgot that i even applied to that opportunity and i was hoping for other companies and i completely forgot about barclays i applied to a lot of companies in india as well as outside india i applied to almost 200 plus applications all over india and outside india and gave online assessment about 50 plus companies and sat for interviews on 13 companies and got three offers in the end so like never lose hope and don't stop until you uh, i mean you reach to what you want so like i had to wait for many days i got my first offer in february i was applying to all the opportunities from last year june and i got my first offer in february which was from service now and the interviews of barclays were in the february end and i got the offer in march and i also got offer from amazon india which was uh, declared in the month of may but i couldn't join both the companies and so so like i had to wait a lot and i was patient because i knew that i deserved better i have to do something so i kept applying even though i didn't get the offer back i just kept applying so i know many of us have faced the same situation so i would like to encourage you that don't lose hope and keep applying because if you don't apply then you will never get through that and that is important you know like people lose hope even talking about myself you know uh, when you are applying and applying and not getting anything in back we just stop applying that's the nature and that's what make us a new different right like you never lose hope and you kept on applying and that's how you landed a international offer so congratulations for that and even like recently uh, jee mains and advance wagera ka result abhi nikla hoga so in case you are not getting a good college don't get discouraged okay look at baswati and she has done a lot so agar aap acche college mein jaate ho nahi jaate ho but if you keep working on yourself and you keep working on your skills you can land up at par or even better than people in good colleges so keep working hard folks and don't get discouraged and and if you have any questions related to international offers and her tremendous number of achievements feel free to reach out to baswati i will be trying to have her again for you know a lot of other things that she did like especially for the linkedin coaching program because i guess people should know about how they should prepare for that and everything so folks let me know if you want her to be in my channel again and so that we can have another podcast on a different topic and till then thanks a lot baswati and folks thanks a lot for listening bye bye